Hello YouTube, LJ Draco here. This is now the second review for the Wednesday reviews. And I said one review is going to be on movies that I like or love and the other one's going to be on ones that I don't particularly like or hate. Obviously, as you watched the first video, this is now Pirates of the Caribbean 4 on Stranger Tides. Um, the reason I did this one separate isn't because I don't class it as a movie in the series. You kind of have to because it's still got Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow. It's just because this is the one that's the least watchable out of all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Unless you're really, really, really that weird and don't like the other two sequels. This is the worst one. Not because it doesn't have all the same characters. Just because the story is not interesting. I'm going to say one good thing about it. Right, There's two good things. But the one main good thing about it is that Johnny Depp is still Captain Jack Sparrow. Now, if anyone remembers, right, there was rumours going around before this movie came out, right, saying that On Stranger Tides was based on Captain Jack Sparrow goes to the Fountain of Youth, drinks from the fountain, and turns into a Zac Efron played Captain Jack Sparrow, which we all know would not have worked out, even though Zac Efron has proven to be a reasonably good actor now that he's getting older. We all know for a fact that we would not have liked to have seen a Zac Efron Captain Jack Sparrow. So I'm glad they decided to change that story and keep Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow for now. I like that idea. That works out brilliantly for me. The second great thing about this movie, I'm going to get into when we talk about the characters and who they are. Let's. I'm not going to too, do too much review on the actual movie itself. I'm just going to give you the, the, the whole point of the story was Captain Jack Sparrow... Uh, meets up with a girl that he used to have a relationship with. It turns out that she's now on a ship. I can't even remember what the name of the ship was. If I do find out what the name of the ship was, I'll put it here. I'm pretty sure it's a very important ship. But this is why I don't like the movie as much. It turns out that this ship belongs to her father. Now, her father is played... right. So, Penelope Cruz is playing a character called Angelica. Okay? I'm going to try and remember to do the names now. So, Penelope Cruz is playing a character called Angelica, who's Johnny Depp's ex... Or Captain Jack Sparrow's ex, sorry. Try and, try and do the characters' names. Sparrow's ex is Angelica, played by the Penelope Cruz. Okay, so they get into this. She dresses up like him and acts like him, and then he comes across the fact that she was trying to be him, trying to recruit new pirates for the ship that she was on, and he was getting annoyed that someone was as impostering him, basically, or, or, or posing as him. There we go. Right. No, don't sound as stupid now. Um, and basically, yeah, so it's her father's ship, and he finds out who her father is, when this is the second best moment about this movie, which is Ian McShane as Blackbeard. He is a very good actor, you know. So as a Blackbeard character, he is an awesome, convincing character. So other than Johnny Depp is still Captain Jack Sparrow, and other than Ian McShane being cast as Blackbeard, this movie sucks. Jeffrey Rush is now Barbosa, who lost his leg. And even he doesn't look like he wants to be in it anymore because he's no longer a pirate. He is now a like navy commander thing for the for the British army, the East India Corporation, which is stupid because Barbosa was like the biggest rebel out of all of them. So to know that he kind of changed over to to, to the good side kind in a bad way is a very stupid idea. I hated Penelope Cruz's character in this. Not that she was a bad actor, I just didn't like her character. Johnny Depp. Still has his Jack Sparrow moments, but they're not as entertaining as the first three. And, you know, just none of the new characters in this was interesting. Not the, the priest guy, not the mermaids, not the cockney guy. This, this story just lost all interest. You watch like the first five minutes and it's just poo. You're just watching a high definition piece of poo. I didn't like it. and. Here's the 3D review. It's unnoticeable, apart from one moment where she throws the sword at the door. So if you're a 3D lover and you like Pirates of the Caribbean, and I know this is the only 3D Pirates of the Caribbean movie that exists on Blu-ray, don't buy it. It really isn't worth the hassle. If you have to watch it, get the DVD or Blu-ray. And if you don't like it that much but still have to own it, just get the DVD. It really isn't worth spending money on the Blu-ray version. Trust me. I know, I've got the Blu-ray version. Only because the Blu-ray version cost me one pound. If it wasn't a pound, I wouldn't have bought it. Seriously. The movie was terrible. The, 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 the script was horrible. There was nothing really entertaining about this movie. 
or exciting. I wasn't smiling. I was angry. I was annoyed at the fact that, that, that they just ruined so much. Kira Knightley wasn't even really mentioned. And you know, sometimes when sequels do go on, the old cast isn't really mentioned. But you'd think that there would be something about the William and Elizabeth story mentioned. There was nothing mentioned at all. Like, they were completely forgotten, and I didn't enjoy it. So, I'm sorry that this review is much shorter, but this is what happens when they try and release too many sequels that just fail. This is why I am not looking forward to Dead Men Tell No Tales, because in my, in my defence, for me, the only thing that looks interesting about Dead Men Tell No Tales, and no, it is not Javier Barden, or whatever his name is, the guy that looks like uh Jeffrey Dean Morgan not him no no is the logo because I like the idea that they've done a different artwork with the skull which you'll see in the image that I've put up for the beginning and for now explaining it that's it that's the only thing that looks good about this movie I might be wrong the movies might turn out to be a bit more fun than this but this is what happens when they make too many sequels this is what happens when there's just too especially when they're not trying to continue on with the story they're just now going for whatever different story appears. I don't like that. It was not a fun movie. That's why this is now on the hate review. Because I I, I own it. And I might be able to watch it once every so often. But I, I only watched the original trilogy. That one just sits there if I'm bored. And there's nothing to go on. And it's just a movie to hear in the background. It's a background movie. We don't even pay attention to it. It's just noise. Anyway guys. I'm going to give this movie a rating of... I can watch it, so it's not going to get a D or a D minus. It's going to get a C minus because I still can watch it. It's not one of the worst movies to exist today. So that that's going to just get a, a, a C minus. Hey guys, if you like this video and you like the previous video, please show your support by clicking that subscribe button. And do not forget to strike the like for future videos. And I will see you guys next time.